everyone. So this is going to be the review for the evolution section uh, of your biology class. So basically what we've done in this unit with evolution is that we're trying to provide a scientific explanation for the things that we see around us, right? So the whole point of biology as a science is to provide evidence for the living world around us. So rather than saying just because we think or we've been told that uh, organisms are here for whatever reason, in biology class we're, we're going to use experimentation and evidence to support our claim of how we see the diverse array of organisms uh, in this world, right? So rather than saying that they're just here because they've been here, let's try to figure out why scientifically using evidence and experimentation. That's, that's all evolution is. It's an observation uh, that's proven true over time, time and time again. That is that organisms change over time through mutation and through adaptation to their environment. Okay, so with evolution, here's what I want you to think of uh, when you see evolution. There should be some key words that stand out, okay? Uh, one of the key things that should stand out with the word evolution is uh, natural selection. Okay, what is natural selection? Natural selection is basically a means of selecting uh, an organism based on its fitness. By fitness, I mean uh, how successful it can be uh, in its given environment, right? So uh, if you are a wolf and you're born with a thick fur coat, your fitness is very high. You will be very successful. Successful meaning you can live and you can reproduce. Okay, If your fitness is low, meaning you're not a good fit for that particular environment, uh, you usually die and you don't reproduce. So uh, you will not be passing on your genes. So one of the reasons that you see, for example, for giraffes, once, one of the reasons you see that all giraffes have long necks is because all the ancestors before them, all the, the, the parent giraffes and the grandparent giraffes, they've all had long necks. Okay. Another phrase is descent with modification. It's not very great for writing on, but we'll go with it. Uh, descent with modification. What are the modifications? Well, they're mutations. Okay, and there are new uh, combos of genes. Remember, you have uh, for almost every organism, you have uh, kind of like a mama and a, a papa organism, right? So those new combinations, uh, one from mom, that's this female symbol, and one from dad, makes these new combos. And the mutations add totally new combinations, right? So. These new combinations uh, have an impact on this organism's fitness. So uh, if you're an organism that has a new combination of, of genes that allows you to be really successful, then yeah, you're going you're gonna to thrive, you're going to live, you're going to reproduce, you're going to pass those genes on to your next generation. Okay, so the genes that you get uh, passed on lead to uh, new phenotypes, right, so that's physical traits oops so the new physical traits that uh, that either help or hurt you uh, in a certain environment right Gu mutations are not guaranteed to help you in fact many times they will hurt you uh, but when a mutation helps an organism, we call that an adaptation. So those adaptations, like that thick fur coat for the cold, uh, like that long neck for eating uh, on trees that are that the, the, the leaves are very high, those are adaptations that that help an organism to be successful in its environment. Okay, so natural selection in action. Let's look at this uh, with this visual from your book. So if you have a certain population of snails, you'll have some that look this way, meaning they're pointed, and some that look this way, 
meaning they're rounded. Okay, so then by themselves, you'll get this random genetic variation within this certain population. However, let's say you have a crab species here on this beach also. And this crab species is very good at catching these guys right here, the pointed ones. You can see that the pointed uh, snail right here fits in his claws perfectly. So he will consume, uh, and, and by doing so kill, all the snails with those pointed shells, leaving these rounded ones. Okay, so the fitness level of those pointed snails is very low. They get eaten. They do not get a chance to uh, pass on their genes. Because of this, those genes, those mutations that, that cause them to be pointed are essentially removed from the population because the only offspring that are around are these rounded ones. So the only genes that will be passed to the next generation are traits for rounded shells. Okay, so for the most part, this uh, population is going to be rounded. Uh, occasionally you'll get a little pointed guy through mutation and, and uh, that kind of change, but overall the population is going to stay a certain way. Because of this interaction between predator and prey, uh, there are th certain things that put pressures on certain populations, and this crab is, is definitely one of them. Another example of natural selection in action are these uh, bugs, right? So we discussed in class how uh, certain genes will give certain bugs resistance to pesticides. So we, we spray um, these bugs and some of them will actually survive. So what's, what's allowing them to survive? Well, in this population of bugs, you'll see ones that have mutation, this little red or this little yellow dot here. Any bug with this gene is going to be resistant, right? So what we'll see with these populations right here is that they die. That's them right here. The only ones that are alive are the ones with these uh, new modifications, this adaptation to their genetic material, which allows them to survive. So the common sense thing here, guys, is that the only ones, it's not because these ones, uh, well, they're dead. They can't reproduce. So that's the obvious thing. You do not reproduce and pass on your genes when you're dead. Instead, only the survivors reproduce. And so what you see over time is this population converts to uh, bugs that have this resistance gene. Right. So hopefully that makes total sense to you. So what drives evolution here? It's not the environment. It's the genetic material. And those novel mutations are what really add, kind of adds uh, variety to the mix. Uh, it's not the environment. The environment basically just says whether or not an organism is fit given its genetic material. So uh, the environment is not pushing evolution forward. It participates in the natural selection part, uh, but the randomness, the change part, comes from the genetic material. So why do you need genetic diversity? Well, there are several things that we looked at that really clued us into why we need this genetic diversity. The lesbian lizard video uh, was fun to watch. It's a funny video, but really the point here, the take home, is that if you're from a species that are essentially cloned from the par parental offspring, you don't have these new uh, mutations introduced. You don't have novel genetic combinations from mom and dad. Instead, you just have copies from your, your clone mother. Uh, so you just passed on the same genes. That's not a good thing for an organism. You really need to have genetic diversity to, um, to be able to withstand changes in your environment. So if you're uh, one of these lizard species and your, your whole evolution is based on you say living in an 80 degree climate, the moment there's a shift in temperature, a sustained temperature shift, like the one we're experiencing with global warming, if you don't have that genetic diversity to uh, adapt with, to create new phenotypes, to create new possibilities of responding to that environmental hazard, you're not gonna go very far and, and instead this um, species would, would probably die. We also saw uh, in the t-shirt example the t-shirt example where the, the guys wore the, uh, the shirts for a week and the women were smelling the shirts, that um, we have an unconscious selection for uh, new material, new genetic material.
right? So if you remember the the women in those uh, in that experiment were unconsciously selecting mates that had uh, immune systems that were different to them. So if you take uh, a male and a female with a certain immune system, basically what you'll you'll have are kids with great immune systems. Right? And obviously that goes a long way to keeping the organism alive and keeping the genes out there. So this is a, an example of a subconscious um, uh, a subconscious liking for a mate that has uh, genes that are complementary to yours or genes that are that are new and create novel offspring. Uh, and, and certainly the game from class uh, will also help in supporting this idea. For those of you that, that have not played that game yet, you will, and it'll make a little more sense then. Okay, so what are the resources for evolution? What was Darwin working with when he was building his case? And we've done this a lot, so I'll just kind of fly through it, but fossils were a big thing for Darwin. Uh, remember when he was in South America, he found uh, the giant sloth fossils. And he was used to seeing sloths as really tiny creatures, but basically when he saw this structure, it looked like the sloth, except much bigger. right? So fossils were a huge finding for him. Uh, there was a lot of geology, uh, ge <laughs> geology uh, that supported that. So he experienced an earthquake. Uh, which was kind of enlightening to him because he saw that the, uh, the the earth could actually move up. And uh, again, geology helped with uh, fossils because you started to see uh, different layers of earth and how uh, these different layers of earth had a different age uh, associated with them. And because of that, they had actual different fossils in each layer. Uh, yeah, I think that, that about does it with that. And then he, he also thought a lot about artificial selection uh, with those dogs and how it was, it was so uh, unnatural and how humans were actually playing a hand in selecting that, that those species and how, or those breeds, I should say, and how it was happening really, really quickly. So that made sense to Darwin. Okay, uh, some modern support for, for Darwin, uh, Darwin's theory. Uh, well, today the slam dunk evidence is DNA, right? This is uh, molecular evidence of evolution. If you compare DNA from a chimp and a human, you'll find that they're roughly 98% similar. Uh, so DNA is, is always kind of the go-to means for comparing uh, whether or not two things are related. We also have developmental biology. And this is the picture in your textbook where a chick embryo looks a lot like a human embryo at a certain developmental time point. And uh, last one we have homologous uh, versus vestigial structures. Okay, you guys know the definitions of these. I'm not going to spend a whole lot of time here going over those. Lastly, we have the bonobos and the chimps. What's the point of this video, guys? It's uh, it was really interesting to see, but there, there's actually a point here, right? So bonobos are an entirely different species of primates to chimps, and they actually behave differently. So what are those behaviors? Okay, how did those behaviors come about? Well, the theory goes that uh, there was a drought, and which wiped out all the gorillas. So now this tree, the tree dwelling ancestor. Basically, half of them went down to the ground and became bonobos, and half stayed up in the, the trees and became uh, what we know as chimps today. And this is the whole point of evolution, right? So you have a population that splits off and goes in different directions. It goes in different directions, and whatever environment that goes into, guys, shapes that collection of organisms to become a new species. So bonobos, uh, they went to the ground. They became a very peaceful kind of fun-loving uh, group of primates, whereas chimps uh, stayed in the trees and actually have a really violent uh, sort of existence where they, they, um, they have to fight for their existence. Simply because of their coming down out of the trees, bonobos are totally different. Uh, over time, that population, that genetic material changed, and now we have completely different species. Um, I'm just about out of time, so if you don't understand parts of these, make sure you come in for extra help. Okay, talk to you soon.